You have olive oil, peanut oil, palm oil, and coconut oil. Those are the finest oils on the face of the earth. Olive oil, peanut oil, palm oil, and coconut oil. But we've been told that palm oil and coconut oil are no problems. You have been told to pack a lies, young lady. You have been told, and I wish I had the time to give you my lecture on that particular subject, in the 1940s, when oils were first really refined and put on the market, you see, I'm old enough to remember when we only used bacon grease, lard, and a few other things, and we didn't have all these refined oils. I can remember when we used to pop popcorn in palm oil, and it was the most delicious tasting stuff you ever had, and it smelled good because palm oil won't go rancid. But now you cook these popcorns in the refined oils and they stink so bad you can hardly stand to go into a movie house. Do you ever think about where that sharp smell comes from? That's the rancid oil they're using to pop their popcorns. My dear lady, you believe that eggs, cheese, butter, uh, cream, etc., clog up your arteries, don't you? That's a lie. That is a big, unadulterated lie. Amen. End of statement. I'll ask you a question. Why, when we ate nothing but lard and eggs and cheese and butter and meat when I was a kid, and bacon, heart disease wasn't even a problem in this nation. It wasn't until the refined oils came onto the market that we had the beginning of heart disease. Within 15 years, we had an epidemic of heart disease in this nation. And now we know. Ma'am, if you want the facts, if you want the real facts and don't want to listen to the poppycock put out by the people who sell the refined oils, and that's where it all came from, they are the people who put the uh, tropical oils and the, uh, the the monosaturated oils out of business. Read my booklet on that subject. It'll be the best three dollars you ever spent in your life. Open your eyes. There is nothing good about margarine. It is in the scientific references today the most toxic substance in your kitchen. I will give you free a 10-page report on margarine, scientifically notated. Just request it. Now, olive oil, peanut oil, palm oil, and coconut oil are the preferred oils in your kitchen, period. End of statement. Don't ask me what about. Mono as referring to unsaturated, all oils, I don't want to do a chemistry class here, all oils are a chain of carbons. On there are hooked hydrogens, and on the end there is a single oxygen, an OH molecule. The more unsaturated, the more open bonds they are where you can attach something, and that's why they're more flexible. The more saturated the oil, the thicker the oil, because the hydrogen is all clumped up onto the carbons. And so it doesn't flow well except at the higher temperatures. You know what palm and coconut oil, it'll thicken up if you just leave it sitting on the counter, like uh, uh, looks kind of, uh, well, what does it look like? Soft butter, you know, like that. That's because it is monosaturated. It's, it's all hooked up. The, you take the bonds away and you take that substance into the body and the normal oxidation processes of the body will convert that oil into a free radical by causing peroxidation to occur. Lipid peroxidation. And those free radicals will cause heart disease, cancer, and a whole bunch of other things. That's what you're getting when you're taking in the unrefined oils, and also with margarine, and Crisco, and all of those goodies. What about cheeses? Any normal cheese is excellent food. 
trans fatty acids, margarine shortenings, they are the most dangerous foods in your kitchen. And this has been documented uh, over and over. It isn't something that I'm making up. Uh, I didn't have an hallucination last night or anything else. Uh, if cholesterol causes heart disease, why doesn't cholesterol ever plug up a vein? Why does it only plug up an artery? If cholesterol is so bad, why does it never plug up a vein? Same amount of cholesterol in the vein. In fact, when a doctor takes your blood, he takes it out of the vein. He doesn't take it out of the artery. So he measures the amount of blood in your blood circulation from your vein, venous blood. Answer me that question, I'll shut up forever. <laughs> Secondly, why do over 50% of the people who have open heart surgeries have normal cholesterols? Those are facts. Answer me that question if cholesterol is such a villain. And last but not least, why did we have to drop the normal level of cholesterol from 300 to 200 in order to sell more anti-cholesterol drugs? Do you realize that for years and years and years and years, even during our heavy heart attack years, the late 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the normal cholesterol reading was considered to be 300. But then when we started really looking at cholesterols and the doctor said, well, hey, that's a lot of people only have 250s. They had a big meeting and they arbitrarily reduced the normal level to 200. Now practically everybody has got too high a cholesterol. It is Bilardi, my dear friends. Let me tell you another fact. I treat a lot of cancer patients. Cholesterol is cancer protective. I have never seen an advanced cancer patient with a high cholesterol. They always have low cholesterols. Think about it. How about protein? Protein is the substance from which all of your cells are made up of. None of your cells are made up of sugar. None of them are made up of fat. They're all made up of protein. Required for all repair of all cells. That includes your immune system and everything else. It's necessary for your immune system. It's necessary for your hormone structures. Fats are also necessary for hormones. Major meat or proteins are meat, eggs, cheese, and fish. Oh, but I'm a vegetarian. I wouldn't want to harm those animals. <coughs> we now have recordings of carrots being pulled out of the ground and crying. <laughs> what do you think that cabbage says when you chop it up? Thank you. Come on, folks. Let's get back to basics. If you know that it is extremely difficult to get the nutrition that you require for vibrant, vigorous health without eating meat, eggs, cheese, fish, are you still going to do it? If you are, I don't want to donate my tax dollars to take care of you as you suffer the ravages of nutrient deficiency disease, which are chronic degenerative disease. Oh, it's harmful to eat meat. It causes arthritis. Do you realize that the Eskimos never had a case of arthritis until civilized food was introduced into their diet? And what do they eat? Fish and meat? Flutter? Right? They had a lot of heart disease, didn't they? None. I mean, if anybody had a right to it, they did. But they don't. 
the Maasai warriors over in Africa. Their main diet is blood, which they drain daily from their cows, and various forms of milk, soured, clabbered, yogurtized, etc. That's their major and meat. Don't have vegetables, and they are the strongest people in Africa. Up to you, up to you, but don't ask me to pay your bills. What about whey? It's a great protein. In fact, whey is the highest quality protein in a concentrated form available to man. Whey, W-H-E-Y. What about lactose intolerance? What about lactose intolerance? Use some lactase enzymes. The only, no, the only thing in American cheeses, the only cheeses that will give you a problem are those which contain lactose. And I mean, lactose intolerance is a simple enzyme deficiency. It is a genetic problem. It is not a, uh, a something that you acquired because of something bad you did. What it about, is a genetic problem. What about the bad in the soil, into the cows, the feed in the cows, and then we get it in the milk? I still think there's something wrong there. Ma'am, I don't question <laughs> that there is something wrong. But let me ask you another question. What about the seven times the lettuce was sprayed before it reached the marketplace with pesticides that are deadly toxins to you? That's why I don't eat it. I eat organic. That's fine. Grow them differently. That's fine. I agree with you. 